we're back. Do you remember what you had for dinner last night? Do you remember when I mi mixed up those two doctors' names at the earlier part of the program? Does it seem like you forget birthdays, phone numbers, people's names even? Well, now here to help with these senior moments, joining me is Dr. Linda Levine Midori, who is going to share with us the five things we can do now to increase our memory and our brain health. Welcome to the show. And we're not going to forget that Levine in there in case your grandmother's watching. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for having me on the show. Why are we forgetful? Well, really what is happening is we've had a revolution about the brain over the last 10 years. And that revolution has come out of looking into living brains. And what we're finding is that we now know that we are not just born with a finite number of brain cells that die away, but in fact we can make new brain cells as we live. So one of the essence of keeping our brain well, as you say, and not forgetting, is to keep our brain cognitively, emotionally, socially, physically, and spiritually engaged. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, we need to know how to do that. Yes. Is this only related to age, or is this uh, younger people have this No, too? this is really younger people as well, but I think one of the biggest emphasis that we have to look at is the fact that baby boomers are just turning 65 right now, and there's millions of them and in fact if we at 40 and 50 start learning how to refocus and rethink about our brains we can keep our brains better longer protect us against Alzheimer's exactly and increase cognitive functioning in our brain because we call it friendly forgetfulness how, how about this issue of the bombardment of stimuli that we well have? exactly modern technology that we're living in today we have the cell phone we have emails we have beepers and blackberries we have computers and one of the things that is important for all of us to do and this is really the spiritual aspect of our brain is to find the quiet time put everything away shut the blackberries off and actually take time shut the blackberries off take time to go within and have some peace and quiet because in fact that rejuvenates your brain well I'm actually all for that but one thing you said I want to focus in on yeah. which is uh, I'm gonna go to a study that I would never have believed but it's a bridge between what you're saying and medical science which is the idea of staving off Alzheimer's, which essentially is that we believe in neurological disease, it's a buildup of neurofibrillar fibril bundles in the brain, it's based on aluminum, it's based on amyloid, and all of this stuff. And abnormal plaques and tangles. But yet, there are studies that show that learning to play games and solving puzzles actually cuts down the incidence of that. I'm glad you're bringing this up because that's really what my whole book is about. In fact, we have right brain personalities and we have left brain personalities. Right brain personalities are people like artists, musicians, people who are creative. Left brain personalities are people who are mathematicians, accountants, lawyers. What we have found through research is that using both sides of our brain is actually uh, linked to cognitive reserve theory which has come out of Columbia University. What that means is that our brain, especially our hippocampus, is growing in mass and density as we stimulate both sides of our brain. I'm actually very sad to hear that because I am left brain dominant. So when people say that, hey, I'm left brain, you're I'll right brain. I'll tell you brain, what to do. What should I do? You do, I need to, do I need to get more right brain in there? Yes. You need to join a dance club. Oh. You need to go paint a little bit. You need to walk out to nature. You really need nature to... Nature here in New York City? Well, go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But yes, th th this, is th this is the concept. And in, in fact, the other concept of our brains, believe it or not, is being social. The more social we are, our hippocampus and our emotions stimulate that brain cell growth. So even if someone's 50 and starts to change their socialization process, they can regenerate brain cells. What is, give me some of the warning signs that dementia is looming over you okay. and it's about to start to hit. And then we need your five things to, to, to block it off. But what's the warning signs? The warning signs and one of the things comes out of socialization. When someone starts to be self-isolating, they don't pick up the phone, they don't call you back, their, their circle of friends decreases, and obviously they start to forget large things, not just where you put your phone or where you put your car keys, but they start to forget how to get home. Oh, how do you, how do you, or how, where to put, listen, there's this book called My Wife Was a Shoe. Uh, how to get home. You actually can forget the traveled ways in which to travel home. Those are the big signs of Alzheimer's disease. Very serious question there, which is, 
uh, you know, we're, we're approaching this as almost a behavioral easy to treat, but that's such a warning sign. Wouldn't you recommend somebody at that point sees a neurologist, sees their doctor, maybe gets an MRI? Yes, absolutely. And I will tell you that through the TAP method, Cornell University in White Plains, we looked at eight individuals who were just diagnosed with mild Alzheimer's disease. They did the TAP method for two hours a week for 14 weeks. And if you go on my website, you'll actually see testimonies on how they felt their brain was functioning better once starting to do art, painting, drawing, music, dance, and use their brains in different ways that they hadn't in the past. So let's get into that. Let's go over the five ways that we can increase our memory and brain health. Okay, first let's, of let's all, go over five. five. Okay, cognition. I, I tell my students at St. Thomas Aquinas College, our brain is like a college campus. There are pathways in concrete from building to building. As we get older, it's better to go across the grass, create new pathways. So you always go home the same way, Choose another way in which to travel home. Brush your teeth with your right hand instead of your left hand. Start to do things differently than you've never done before. Is that like a cobweb theory? Exactly, because not only is it a cobweb theory, but really what we're realizing is, looking inside the brain, we're able to see that the hippocampus grows new cells every time we're stimulated. So if you're in a situation where you have to figure out how am I gonna get home from here, or you're watching somebody who's performing in a show, your brain is lighting up and that is creating new brain cells. So that's the cognitive. The cognitive. You've got five. Social. Social, what's social? With social, the important key here is to keep a group of friends around you throughout your life. And actually, it is uh, suggested that those friends are of different generations. So as we get older, sometimes we lose our older friends. So we have a, a close-knit group of friends that we travel through our life with. The reason, as we socialize, we remember and re reminisce positive memories. Believe it or not, the brain doesn't know the difference between talking about our past vacation or being on that vacation. So being social and talking about your life is very positive for your brain. Seems to me that may even be connected to your next point, which is emotional, because as you remember, it is. tell it me is. how it works. So what happens emotionally is that our limbic system, which is called the seat of our emotions, is stimulated by sharing positive emotions. Interestingly, what a lot of people don't know, is that negative emotions affect the brain negatively. And we now know through studies that depressed people have a higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. The cells in the brain actually start to shrivel up as we are more and more depressed or we're in a depressive emotional environment. And we also have seen that in children who come out of poverty or uh, emotional disturbances. You know, Melissa, our producer just asked a fantastic question because the way you've set this up, it's inside all of our heads one-on-one. -on -one. But what about sharing emotions? Can we combine and in that way help each other? Well, that's what the TAP method is all about. The TAP How method, does it work? it's a group situation. The first two steps is conversation and meditation. We go within, we get that quiet, we get a moment in our mind that we can reflect on. Then the therapist leading the group will say, okay, what did you see in your garden? What did you see in your vacation spot? The person then has a personal entity that they want to project and talk about in the group situation. And then so they'll resonates. move it to, and they'll resonate and move to painting. Does that lead Maybe other people in the group to come up with their story? It'll also lead them to be educated. We learn in group situations like school. Physical and spiritual, the okay. last two. The last two, big ones. Physical we know a lot about. Physical we know that in fact you, you, know, you don't exercise, we don't increase circulation. We tend to get heavier as we age. That's bad for our brain. If we keep well physically, if we exercise, and if we do actually neurodevelopmental sequencing, where we cross our body midline, that is known to exercise the brain. By the way, you, you said weight, and, and I, I just recently reported on a study which seemed to show that exercise was more important than weight per se. Now that was in patients with heart disease, very specific group. Right. But I'm wondering which you think is more important, the exercise part which re releases neurochemicals in the brain, very healthy hormones, right. or the weight part? Well, weight has been linked now closely to longevity. We now know that the thinner, leaner in mass and density you are as a whole, you could live longer than the person who is overweight. We know that now. But of course you mean both. You want the lean, mean fighting machine. Exactly. 
And what about the spiritual part? And how do we share spiritual and, experiences to take you know, up on that theme? Yeah, and you know, most of us when we think of spirituality, we think of religion. This is not religion. This is really finding the spirit within. As I said to you, we're living in a very hectic, chaotic world. Many people say to me, I forget where my keys are. Am I having a cognitive moment? Is something wrong with me? No. We no? need no know? because we're overwhelmed. We're overwhelmed with knowing too much. I saw you come in. You had, you had <laughs> Melissa tell you five people waiting online that you were going to interview. I'm very impressed. You took that in. You are sitting here and you've interviewed everybody very successfully. Yeah, but I'm, no, I'm the, an example of what not to do. I'm not, I do too many things at once. I'm actually, I'm, I want you to state this because I'm, I'm assuming that you actually think we're all bombarded with too much. There's I do. too much multitasking. Yes. Doesn't multitasking in, interfere with your ability to remember things? Yes. It does. There's no question about it. Our brain can only do two or three things at a time. So I, I teach class and if somebody takes out a cell phone and starts texting, they're not listening to what I'm saying. You can only do one thing at, at once, but technology is bombarding us with all these things at once. We have a laptop, we have our work. But spirituality, and you know, I want to leave with this, we are what we think. In other words, Think about positive thoughts affects your brain. Think about how you can make your life more positive affects your brain. And it's never too late to start this at 50, 60, 70, or 80, because now research shows that even 80-year-olds can rejuvenate their brain and enhance cognition. I want to ask you one more question. Sure. One final tip that you can think of, and, and, and I will give you a hint. I want to know how to relax. It, does relaxing help you remember? I'll give you a great tip because I am also very high strong. I do a hundred different... <laughs> we both have high energy. High energy. We do a hundred different things at once. I have four kids, you know, a cat and a dog and a husband. But... Um, you put it in that order. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, my husband will say that too when he sees this. But what I would suggest, seriously, is meditation. And simple. Go out and get yourself a CD or download a relaxation, Deepak Chopra relaxation off your iPod and put it into your stand at night, your iPod stand. Listen to the music as you fall asleep or take a break in your day in your office and put it on and just take five minutes to recenter yourself. That rejuvenates our brain and gives us more energy to be workaholics. Now, Linda, I know Deepak Chopra is going to be very happy to have gotten that plug. But I want to end with one more final tip. Yeah. Beyond listening to Deepak and relaxing and maybe having a glass of wine, yeah. what, what's, what's one final tip to, for, for all memory? Well, for all, for memory. all memory, I think the, the most important thing we have to start thinking about as a country is the amount of money we're putting into the healthcare system regarding cognition and Alzheimer's disease. Not enough? It's a huge, huge, huge expense. Someone can live oh, with I Alzheimer's see. disease for 18 years at, on the average. What we need to do, and this is really my last thought and what I want to get out there into all your viewers, we need to start realizing that we can protect our brains through our thoughts and through our actions. And in fact, if we all start practicing this, we can put off cognitive decline. We can put off Alzheimer's and it could save us trillions of dollars in healthcare. Matter of fact, the TAP method has just been shown to save $80,000 uh, $80, in one healthcare study. That's real preventive medicine. Excellent. Yes. Linda Levine Midori, see I remember that. I remember that all the way through. Thank very, you very, very nice much. to have you on. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break and coming up, we see it in the tabloids all the time, but celebrities aren't the only ones falling victim 